Lurch IX can be bought in different versions. This one is the kit version with 3D printed parts. You can also get this printer without 3D printed parts, but then you need another 3D printer to print them yourself. If you don't want to assemble it yourself, you can get pre-assembled version also. Kit comes with a paper manual and there are also assembling videos on Lurch YouTube channel. Assembly isn't difficult, but it takes time. I recommend to watch assembling videos because paper manual has some errors. Assembling it yourself helps you to understand different parts and how different things work. Lurch IX has open source hardware and it can be modified easily. Lurch IX is a small size 3D printer which has parts 3D printed with PLA plus filament. It has one C axis which gives different look to it and I didn't notice any negative effect caused by that. You can choose between different connection types. To control this printer you can use touchscreen or rotary knob. You also have touch pen to use touchscreen. Cable chain makes cable management neat and it don't have messy cables laying around. On the top of the frame is handle which makes moving this printer very easy. X and Y axis are belt engineers. The bed size is 180 by 180 and it's covered with flexible spring steel sheet with PIA clothing. This is the V3 version which has ready those pre-made to the frame for the linear rail upgrade. IX has nice interface which has much more options and settings you can change and tune than regular 3D printers. You can use USB flash drive, micro SD memory card or Wi-Fi to transfer models to the printer. Lures don't have automatic leveling which most of the printers have nowadays. Manual leveling is easy, you need to adjust the axis limit switch lever and after that you use paper sheet to level 4 corners. Lurch also made 3D printing filaments, spool comes with usual packing and winding seems ok but I have seen better ones. This printer also have filament sensor which will detect filament runouts and allows you to resume printing. I wanted to see if this function, function work and I cut the filament to see what happened. Filament sensor detected filament runout and paused. I reloaded the filament and I hit the play button. Printer continued printing without problems. Printing continued so well that you almost can't see the place where it happened. Continue printing function should be working also if power goes out. I tried it but if I turn printer on I didn't see any option to continue and I also checked if I can continue from the model file. The included spool holder is one of the worst ones I have seen. Spools don't spin freely and printer pulls spool against the extruder. I measured heat bed and the temps were around 60 degrees which was the temperature I had set before. Lurch IX has 240 watt power supply, during heating it takes little bit more than 200 watt and when printing it takes 90 to 135 watts. When you choose your print file you can't directly select the file by touching it, you need to use arrows or rotary knob, it's a little bit annoying. When printer is working you can see file name, printing time, percent, C height and temps. You can change different settings during printing. There are also options to auto shut down after printing is finished. Before the printer shuts down it will cool down to 40 degrees. It's not very noisy 3D printer but not quiet either. It's in the middle of the printers I have used. First print had layer shift. I thought maybe it's problem with the slicing and I tried another model. Then I got away worse and I had much more than one layer shift. The layer shift was on a crack axis so I looked it over and noticed that the belt is rubbing against the frame. Belt tensioner poly is too low. I redesigned the bracket and made it a little bit taller. After the change, a crack axis moved to sm much smoother. I used the same file to print the bench again and no layer shift anymore. He printed under the 15 minutes, which is ok time. The quality is mostly good, but there are some ghosting. I printed the test mo model again and also no layer shift. This problem seems to be fixed. But this wasn't the only problem I had. The filament sensor started to trigger filament runout, but the filament was ok. If I moved the filament, it turned on and off. I took it apart and didn't solve any problems there. I continued testing the printer and I had one sensor error after that. Lead screw made bad noise and I had to unscrew all x-axis motor, bracket screws and lead screw nut and then retighten everything. After that the noise went away. 
The compact design has some downsides. The bed hides the screen when it moves forward. Screen could be more on the left side. Powder tube and wires are rubbing against the lead screw. Cooling fans don't have any covers. You can print them yourself, but they should come with the printer. Auto filament loading is quite fast. Many printers are so slow that loading filament by hand is much faster. Flexible plate holes print nicely in place and after cooling it's very easy to remove them. If we watch this 3D printer test print we can see that it can handle over ranks quite good. One corner was a little bit warped. Bridging test is ok. Smaller text could be better. The dimensions are off by 0 to 0 0.3 mm. Dimensions accuracy can be improved by calibrating E-steps and flow rate. This printer has many opportunities to change different settings, so this should not be a problem. I printed LEGO calibration cubes with different filaments and I got similar results. I didn't have any problems and quality is fine. Tolerance test came out quite good, only 0.50 mm one don't move. The 0.1 mm seems to be designed without gap between two parts. Overall the cat came out great without strings, but the bottom of the print is a little bit rough. I also tested waste mode, which worked fine. Articular prints are great to test bed adhesion. I printed this goblin which stick to the bed nicely. There are some excess pieces of filament under the chin and on the upper lip. Overall good quality with smooth layers. Ice cream another great print. I had different problems with this 3D printer and I still managed to get good quality and smooth 3D prints. It's a smaller sized printer which is good if you don't have much space to place it but it will quickly become too small. It's easy to use so it suits for beginners and it has many ways to tune and modify it so it suits for advanced users also. I am not a fan of the PLA 3D printed parts but it was easy to modify when I had some problems. You can get it quite cheap so it makes it good 3D printer to get no 3D printers and it is easy thing for you. If you have any questions comment below and I will try to answer them. Also more info will be in the description.